This is Cast of Wonders, the young adult fiction podcast featuring stories of the fantastic. Welcome. I'm Catherine Inskip, your editor and host. Episode 542 is our 40th Little Wonders collection. The theme of today's stories is stepping out of your comfort zone. Our first story is Monstech by Adam Gaylord, a Cast of Wonders original. Adam Gaylord, whose pronouns are he, him, lives in Colorado with a wife that is smarter than him and their two monster children. When not at work as an ecologist, he's usually writing, baking, drawing comics, or some combination thereof. Find him on Twitter at Author Gaylord. This story is narrated by Kaylin Norman Slack. Kaylin Norman Slack works during his days as a support engineer, but spends his time voice acting, composing music and making games. You can find his music on SoundCloud under Mr. Game and Audio. And now we've a tale to tell. It's tough being a monster nowadays. With the constant threat of terrorism, global warming, and yet another Michael Bay film, the average person just doesn't have enough fear at the end of the day for what's lurking under the bed. More and more monsters are being forced to find new employment, and we at Monstech are here to help. Monstech gives monsters like you the skills and resources necessary to succeed in today's workplace. We'll work with you to turn your strengths and passions into not just another job, but a meaningful and satisfying career. Just listen to these satisfied customers. I figure. I'm a swamp monster. What do I know about business? Monstech helped me get trained in wetland delineation and aquatic plant ID. Now I own my own environmental consulting firm. Thanks, Monstech. I'm not exactly tech savvy. Monstech helped me dust off my computer skills and connect with a client base. Now I translate papyri from all over the world right from the comfort of my own tomb. Me hate fire. Now, me firefighter. Me put out fire. Fire bad. Monster good. Our highly trained call centre is staffed with monsters who understand what it takes to transition into the workforce and are dedicated to making sure you succeed. As a gesture of our commitment to you, call now for your free, no-obligation career information booklet containing such helpful tips as dressing for success, coordinating ties for multiple heads, interview etiquette, leave your chainsaw at home, conflict resolution, when is it okay to eat your boss, and many more. So crawl out of that hole, put down that femur, and pick up that phone. Your future awaits. Call Monstech today. Monstech, out of nightmares and into the workforce since 1967. Just because society doesn't always appreciate your talents, it doesn't mean you don't have them. Sometimes the things that set you apart are what make you special, important, or just what your friends need you to be. I love the way this piece presents the different career testimonials so positively. These individuals aren't trying to conform to society's expectations or become someone they're not. They're being their best selves and taking pride in that. Our second story is Texas Instruments TI-84 plus CE, the chaperone no one asked for, another Cast of Wonders original. This story is both written and narrated by Samantha Dunn. Samantha Dunn is a journalist, short story writer and comedian whose oversharing problem has now spilled into three mediums. She has a short story published in On The Run, an online contemporary flash fiction magazine, and was a finalist in New York City Midnight's 100-word microfiction competition. When she's not writing, she is likely either backpacking across different countries, debating the necessity of the Oxford comma with her colleagues, or performing improv and stand-up comedy, where she tries to walk the line between desperate for validation and endearing enough to keep them coming back. You can follow her on Twitter at SamanthaDunn9 or her website. And now, we've another tale to tell. Texas Instruments TI-84 plus CE. The chaperone no one asked for. 
by Samantha Dunn. Narrated by Samantha Dunn. I can't believe Nicholas brought me to the school dance. Me, the finest graphing technology, the Texas Instruments TI-84 plus CE, a prisoner in the shirt pocket of a 12-year-old boy. No better than the common iPhone. I brace myself as he pushes through the double doors of Holly Middle School's cafetorium, helpless to stop the taunting shore to come. Strobe lights pulsate with the impulsivity of ancestral electronics, showing none of the finesse of a fine-tuned calculator like me. I'm not your grandmother's calculator, and these color-changing LED bulbs know it. Yet, here we all are in the thick fog of Axe body spray, slumming it with the 2009 Yamaha stereo system and witnessing the full horror of hormonal preteens gyrating on the dance floor. Count me out. What? I'm a calculator not unequipped to produce humor. Get with the programming. <laughs> Look, I did it again. Nicholas tentatively ventures further into the cafetorium which is transformed from a room with four walls, fluorescent lights, and lines of lunch tables, to a room with four walls, dim lights, and fewer lunch tables. There's also a poster. Love is forever. Mm, mathematically speaking, that's impossible. Love ends. Math is forever. Great-grandfather Abacus taught me that. He crunched the numbers. Nicholas takes a seat at one of the empty tables encircling the dance floor, freeing me from his sweaty shirt. He fiddles with my buttons, designing graphs his classmates couldn't dream of. Around him, the other students shake and bounce on the laminate tile to what my stored intel registers as Ariana Grande. Nicholas is uninterested in Ariana Grande. He's a nerd, Relegated to the corner, with only me and a single-minded drive to solve the Riemann hypothesis on his mind. Perhaps it's cliche, but it all adds up. I'm your all-night humans. Seriously, get me out of here. Oh god, am I destined for the hands of a madman billionaire? I've heard rumors from the KDO electronic calculators at the manufacturer about the likes of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg toting devices to dances during their middle school days. And look what happened to them. That can't be my fate. Another boy approaches Nicholas, who is still bent over in his frenzied search for answers to the world in my programming. Ugh, Jeremy. The last time that bespeckled and freckled friend got a hold of me, the equation he produced always happened to equal 69. I nearly short-circuited. A sophisticated computer reduced to the rudimentary humor of prepubescence? What would Texas Instruments TI-108 think of me now? Jeremy sits down in a suit that swallows him whole and crinkles as he shifts awkwardly in the chair. Hey, he says. Nicholas looks up, briefly. He can't be stopped, punching numbers to the vibrations of the loudspeakers. He doesn't need the music. I am his instrument. Hey, Nicholas answers. Having fun? No. You? No. Jeremy looks at me, sitting on the table. Why'd you bring your calculator to the dance? Nicholas shrugs. I'm in the middle of a groundbreaking mathematical discovery. He isn't. Cool, Jeremy says before reaching over and grabbing me. Oh dear. Want to see something cool? He continues. No. Sure. Jeremy types out 58008, more commonly known as boobs. I really have lost all control here. The boys double over in laughter. Even the most intelligent middle schoolers fall victim to the comedic throes of human anatomy. I malfunction in protest, which just leads to more oily fingers jamming my circuitry. But if there's any hope for evading a future as the calculator of an antisocial eccentric, perhaps it's Jeremy. He puts me down, eyes scanning the throng of middle schoolers. So, why aren't you dancing? Jeremy questions as a group of children pass by, casting looks at the pair. Judgmental eyes land on me, and the preteens giggle into their hands. 
I heat up. I may be an all-knowing electronic device, but not even my configuration can operate beyond the cruelty of 12-year-old girls. Dancing stupid. Nicholas looks at me on the table and fiddles with the sleeves. My mom made me come to this thing. I don't know. I think dancing's kind of fun, Jeremy says. What if we look stupid dancing together? Nicholas opens his mouth in protest right as I lock optics with Mr. G. Mustached and manicured, wearing the unspoken uniform assigned to every Dan chaperone. Tweed blazer, steam press button down, name tag sticker, worn with unearned pride. 58008 still lights up my screen. I feel exposed. Mr. G saunters over, picks me up, and flips me over, scanning my numerical genitalia. What's this, gentlemen? He says. I can't get a break tonight. Red flushes their cheeks as they make a calculated effort to stifle their laughter. Nothing, Mr. G, Jeremy pipes up. We were just doing some math for fun. Mr. G clucks his tongue disprovingly. Likely story, he says. You can get this back at the end of the night. But before he can carry me away, I debase myself and produce two variables on a graph. Dancing. I calculate a 99.95% chance Jeremy saw it before Mr. G sheathed my screen with a plastic cover. He places me on the stage next to the sound system. The vibrations rattle my case until it slips off in front of the confiscated Samsung Galaxy S22. Great. The hottest technology seeing me like this. Above the shrill sound of antiquated mechanics, I detect a nasal regularity belonging to Jeremy. Well, I guess we have to dance now. Nothing else to do, Jeremy says. He gets up, swaying in rhythm as he steps over to an empty spot on the dance floor. Nicholas is frozen. Aren't you coming, Jeremy says. Nicholas shakes his head. I'll look stupid. Can't look stupid next to this. Jeremy loses all control of his appendages, his syncopated movements and neophyte attempt at breakdancing. Nicholas's laugh cuts through the blaring pitch of the loudspeakers. He gets up, steps forward, and then the two boys disgrace the dance floor in ways madmen billionaires never could. It's incredibly rewarding to spend time doing something you excel at, but sometimes doing something we're terrible at in the company of friends is even better. Our true friends don't place expectations on our shoulders. We don't have to perform, we don't have to hide our fear or our joy. We can try new things, we can be foolish, we can mess up and laugh at ourselves. As teens, it can sometimes take great strength of character and courage to just act our age. With so much focus on growing up, impressing our peers, conforming to expectations, that's not always easy. Real friends will give you the space and the confidence to be exuberant, to be silly without being embarrassing, to live each moment to the fullest, and those memories will be with you forever. Join us again soon. We love bringing you the best audio fiction week after week, but we can't do it without your support. Your donations pay our authors, our narrators, our servers and our staff. Please consider supporting us with a monthly donation through either PayPal or Patreon. You can also review us on Apple Podcasts, request us on Spotify and consider the stories we publish for award consideration. There are lots of ways you can help. Join the discussion on the EA Forum, forum.escapeartist.net or EA Discord. Visit on Twitter at Cast of Wonders. Come say hello. Cast of Wonders is brought to you by editor Catherine Inskip, assistant editor Alicia Caparasso, associate editors Tanya Adelit, Amy Brennan, Kapya Cobb, Somto Ehesway, Amanda Kong, Ray O, oh, Simon Pan, Samuel Poots, Emma Smales, Denise Sudell, and Rin Yu. Our editorial assistant is Amy Brennan, our community manager is Denise Sudell, and our audio producer is Jeremy Carter. Cast of Wonders is part of the Escape Artist Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit, and this episode is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. That means you can download or listen to the episode on any device you like, but you can't change it or sell it. 
The Little Wonders theme music is Neversus by Alexei Nov, available from Promo DJ or his Facebook page. Thank you for listening. <laughs>